Testing, testing. Good morning, East Mount Zion family and friends and everyone that is not present. Hopefully that you're watching us live stream. And we are very sure, like about 110%, that you will enjoy the service today. My name is Andy Hatcher and I will be giving you your call to worship. It's coming from Matthew, the 13th chapter, uh, verses 1 through 13. It's the parable of the sower. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have, will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear understand. And this is the word of the Lord. Before I get into the prayer, every now and then, I think most of you know I would probably come across a little tidbit that I would share. For happy moments, praise God. For difficult moments, seek God. For quiet moments, worship God. For painful moments, trust God. And for every moment, thank God. Can we bow for a word of prayer? Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, and our Creator, we come to you this morning, Father, just to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for just waking us this morning, Heavenly Father. You didn't have to do it, but you did. And we thank you. 
Thank you, Father, for just the many blessings that you just continue to shower down upon us, Father. We're so thankful, Father. We're thankful, Father, that you love us and we love you, but we can never love you as much as you love us. Father, you're such a gracious God. You're an awesome God. And we are so glad that you're God and God all by yourself. We give you praise. We give you glory. And Father, I want to thank you, Father, for just continuing to help me in situations where I, I don't know how to say it except that sometimes I think I'm in control and on occasion do I mess up? Yes, I do. So, Father, I thank you for that because you say in Philippians 4, 6, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. So, Father, that also reminds me that maybe we need to spend a a little less time in Facebook and more time in your book. Father, we just thank you for being God and God all by yourself, Father. Father, we ask that you just forgive us our sins and transgressions. We know, Father, that we are not perfect. So we come to you, Heavenly Father, in repentance. And Father, we know, Father, that you are with us always because you neither sleep nor slumber. And we thank you for that, Father. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. We thank you, Father, for just continuing to bless the sick and shut in. Our bereaved families, Heavenly Father, we've had so many of them lately. We ask that you just continue to comfort them, Heavenly Father, to be with them. Father, we thank you, Father, for just providing for the homeless, Heavenly Father. There's so many that they have no idea where their next meal is coming from. They have no idea where they're going to lay their head tonight, Heavenly Father. So, Father, you have all power. And we just ask you, Father, to take care of those. Father, we ask a special prayer for our East Mount Zion family and their entire families, Heavenly Father. A special blessing for our pastor and our first lady, Heavenly Father. And we thank you, Father, for sending them to us, Father. We just feel so blessed, Heavenly Father. And we know, Father, that you are the one in charge. So we're not going to just try to do everything ourselves, Heavenly Father. But just help us, Father, that whatever we ask, whatever we ask, Heavenly Father, it be according to your will and not ours, Father. Father, you have blessed me and my family so much, Father. You've answered prayers I haven't even prayed yet. So I thank you for that, Father. And it's these blessings that we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. enter. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on you all. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. Every now and then the Holy Ghost has a special way of showing up whenever he gets ready. Two times in 
our service, the Holy Spirit showed up last Sunday and before we began this worship experience. We all are going through something. We all have burdens that we have to bear. But we know Jesus is the one that will help us get through. And as we were practicing a few minutes ago, the Holy Spirit showed up in an unusual way. And so I just want to yield to the Spirit of God and I want to just worship. And I just want to look to God. So just close your eyes and think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done. Think about how he's carried you through the week. Think about how he kept you from danger seen and unseen. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Pass the cast on the song. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, you all know this. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Revive us again. Come on, get that in your spirit. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thine the glory. Think about what he's done. Revive. about that 
that name yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord come on worship him yes Lord has he been good to you? Has he been good to you? Yes, Lord. He's been so good. Oh, he's been so good. Well, he's been so good. Oh, yeah. He's been so good. He's been so good. Oh, he's been so good. Hallelujah. Thy the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thy the glory. When you go home, you'll sing that. When you think about how good God has been. Come on. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. When you think about how good he's been, he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Is God worthy? Come on, let's worship him. He smiles on. Oh, hallelujah. Thine the glory. Hallelujah. Oh, man. Hallelujah. He gets all the glory. Revive us uh, Oh, hallelujah Thine the glory Worship him He's worthy To be praised When you get to thinking about When you think about Jesus a way maker. He's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He's been there when you fail to pick you back up. He come on, he's worthy to be praised. Thy the glory revive. Praise the Lord, East Mount Zion. Praise the Lord, East Mount Zion. Oh, I think you did a good job of setting that atmosphere this morning. They did a great job of that prayer and that verse to me. Hallelujah. All glory yours. Hallelujah. And to be sung. Hallelujah. For your glory, Lord. Anybody need reviving this morning? Anybody need reviving? For one person in the house. You are all perfect. You needed the reviving this morning. Come on, why don't you just lift your hands and allow him to revive you this morning? Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. To the Lord. To the Lord. God, revive us again. Revive us again. Restore us, Lord. Not to where we were, but better 
Jesus tells us that where two or three are gathered in his name, he's in the midst of us. Amen. And that is why I am welcoming you to our praise and worship service, because Jesus Christ is here for you. Welcome.
I don't know if the Lord Hallelujah. has set some ambushments for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the children of Israel with Jehoshaphat, God told them that the battle's not yours, it belongs to him. And as they said, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever, God set ambushments and all of the enemies fought one another and devoured one another. And it said they were able to go and to take the spoil. But just celebrating our Lord and watching him fight our battles for us. He's good. 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 He's a good God. He's good. Come on, can you get that down in your spirit? He's good. Try not to yell in the mic. He's good. But just out of your belly, he's good. 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 His mercy endures to all generations. He's good. He's good. Yes, he is. He's a good God. He's a good God. God is good. He's a good God. God is good.
I no longer call you a slave. I no longer call you a servant. For everything that the Father has given unto me and spoke unto me, I have given it to you. Those are Jesus' words. No longer are you a slave. No longer. You are my friend. Why? Because I call you friend. We have that assurance this morning that we are a friend of God. Trying this thing. Okay. All right. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Good. My wife made fun of me before I came out here about this. I put on my head. Don't look too bad, do it? Okay. Good. It's so good to see Mrs. Bowie here. Doesn't she look so beautiful? <laughs> understand Miss Boy, she doesn't she doesn't like to be out front, but it's so good to see you today, Mrs. Boy. Amen. Amen. All right. Let us pray. Gracious and kind God, we thank you for your loving kindness towards us. We thank you for how you watch over us, for how you keep us. From danger seen and unseen. There were some things, God, that we should have went through this week, but because you were protecting us, your angels held it back. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. There were so many things that we encountered this week that we thought was the worst thing we ever experienced, but we hadn't seen anything yet from what you protected us from. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. While we were driving down the street, the accident that should have killed us, you held it back, and for that we say thank you. But the sickness that should have taken over our bodies, God, you held it back, and for that we say thank you. We ask for forgiveness, O oh God, for the moments when you did something for us and we did not say thank you. Well, right now, God, we have a moment to just say thank you for all that you do and all that you are. I thank you, God, for keeping us. I thank you, God, for healing our bodies. I thank you, God, for protecting us. I thank you, God, for providing for us. I thank you, God, that you have blessed us in ways we could not bless ourselves. And so for a moment in worship, God, we pause just to say thank you. It's preaching now, time now, God, and I pray that you remove all distractions from our minds. All the things that we're thinking about today, all the things we're thinking about doing after church, I pray, oh Lord, you remove it. Because God, I know you have a word for us today. I know there is something that you want to share to us, oh Lord, Please let the enemy leave us alone right now so that we can hear a word from you. Forgive us for all of our sins and all of our transgressions we've committed against you. And Lord, we anticipate feeling your presence in this place. It is in your name that we pray. Every child of God said amen. If the Lord has done anything for you that you couldn't do for yourself, why don't you give him praise? I said, if the Lord has done anything for you that you couldn't do for yourself, why don't you give him praise? Amen. I want to uh, go to Luke, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter number 13. We will begin a, 
a new sermon series that I'm so excited about that God has been wrestling with me all week long about and really for the last two weeks. And uh, the sermon series is called Make Room. I believe God desires to pour something in all of our lives. God desires to give all of us something. God desires to give purpose to all of us. But one of the problems is, is that we don't have enough room in our lives to receive what God wants to give to us. Pastor Snail, a few weeks ago, told the story of Jesus coming to knock on a woman's door and the woman having to tell Jesus, wait, hold up, I got to get this out of the way. I got to do this. I got to do that. She didn't have enough room for Jesus to come in. I wonder if the Lord is trying to pour something in all of our lives. I wonder if the Lord is trying to plant something purposeful in your life. And can the Lord plant in your life, do you have enough room to receive what God has for you? Or is there too much stuff already in your life that's clouding and colluding and crowding the space that he wants to pour? That God doesn't have enough room in your life for you to receive. So we're going to go to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, it is the parable of the sower. And all month long, we're going to be dealing with an aspect of this parable that speaks to areas of our lives that we need to cultivate and we need to work on and make room for God to be able to plant something in our life that can grow. Because God can plant something. You can bring our, our, our guests in, those who are at the door. Come on in. Come on in. It's okay. God wants to plant. But let me ask you this. If God planted something in your life right now, do you have enough room for it to grow? Think about that as we go through this, this season. What is in your life right now that will hinder growth? that God is expecting to grow in your life. Matthew 13, we'll read the entire parable, and today we're going to focus in particular on one aspect, and um, we'll see what the Lord shares with us. Matthew 13, verse 1 says this, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. They withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times was sown. Whoever has ear, let them hear. I want you to go to verse 18 where Jesus explains this parable. He says, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in the heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they had no root, the last only, but since they had no root, they only last a short time. 
When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the warriors of this life and the deceitful wealth choke up the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands the word. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Jesus ordinarily wanted to teach people a message. He had so much to share to them, but many of them couldn't understand what he was trying to give to them. So he talked in parables. P parables, we understand, are earthly stories that hold heaven, heavenly truths. But the word parable from the Greek means to throw alongside something. The word para means to throw. And the word abo means to cast alongside. Really, what Jesus was doing was saying, I want to give you a truth. You won't understand what I'm trying to give you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a story and cast alongside my truth. So the truth is, um, th there are many of you who are so stubborn, you won't hear what I'm going to say. Many of you have already fixed in your minds what you think life is about. Many of you are already focused on what you want on a life and what you want to do. So when I come to you and try to give you this word, you won't understand it. So what I'm going to do is, before I tell you the truth, I'm going to wrap it up in a parable. And so Jesus comes to these Pharisees who most times they really didn't want to hear from Jesus. And most times they didn't really want to understand what Jesus was trying to give to him. So Jesus tells them of this parable of a sower. He says, a sower goes out one day and all the sower does is cast seeds, throws seeds out. The sower's job is to do one thing and it's to sow seeds. The sower goes out every day and during this time, there is no kind of strategy behind sowing seeds. The strategy behind sowing seeds is to throw as many seeds as you possibly can because the more seeds you throw, the greater the harvest is. Now, now, now people have a more kind of intellectual strategy, right? So I'm going to plant seeds here. If I plant seeds in this ground, we're going to get a whole bunch of harvest because this is good soil. But during this time, the sower understands as many seeds as I throw, you know, I can get as much harvest. That was their kind of plan. So the sower's responsibility is one thing, to sow seed. And the sower sows the seed, and the seed falls on different types of ground. Now, depending upon what type of ground the seed falls on, depends upon what type of harvest happens. So if I throw my seed, on good ground, that ground will produce a great harvest. But if I throw my seed on a ground that is not cultivated, that doesn't have any soil, that doesn't have a good dirt, or doesn't, it's not in an area where the sun can reach it, then that seed will die. You see, the parable of the sower is not about the sower nor the seed. It's about the ground that receives the seed. I want you to hear this. The parable of this, this parable is not on the responsibility of the sower because the sower is going to sow seed, right? The sower is going to go out every day and he's just going to throw seed. It's not on the seed because the seed is being thrown by the sower. It's really on the responsibility of the groundskeeper. Are you cultivating your ground? In such a way that when the sower gets ready to sow seed, you're ready to receive. Three scenarios. You have the scenario of the path, the roadside. The sower sows seed on the roadside. 
Then the sower sowed seeds on rocky ground. Then the sower sowed seeds on thorny ground. And then the sower sowed seeds on good ground. Jesus is really trying to illustrate, I want all of you to be good ground, good soil, because I have something to plant in your life that is going to manifest and is going to be great and it's going to grow and it's going to be something that other people can enjoy. But the problem with many of you are, none of you are good soil, but most of you fall within these other areas. Whether it's the path, whether it's thorny ground, or whether it's rocky ground. Jesus is really trying to get them to understand that God has a word to plant in all of our lives. That if it catches in the right place, it will produce something that will be beneficial for you and someone else. The question is, are you ready to receive it? Would you say that with me? Are you ready? Are you ready to receive? Say, God has a seed to sow in your life. Are you ready to receive it? And so Jesus lines out three different areas that are not good ground. And then he finishes with the last area that is good soil. The first thing we're going to start today with is the pathway. It's found in verse number three and four. Go over there with me. He says, then he told them many things in the parable, saying, a farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Read that again. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. If you go to verse number 19, Jesus explains this. He says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. Listen to that again. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What was sown in their heart. This means this. The enemy knows how beneficial God's seed is in your life. And so what the enemy is doing is watching to see that you're not ready to receive. And when God sows a seed that is supposed to grow and develop in your life, and you are in a place where you're not ready to receive what God is sowing, what the enemy does is he watches. Oh, they're not ready. God has sold something of purpose for them to be able to grow and develop, but they're not ready. So what I'm going to do is wait on them to not receive what God has for them, and then I'll do what? Snatch it up. This is the word today. Do not let the enemy steal your seed. That's what I want to talk about today. Don't let the enemy steal your seed. Would you say that with me? Don't let. Come on. Don't let the enemy steal your seed. Say this with me. I have. A promise seed. A promise seed. And I'm not going to let the enemy steal my seed. The seed of God is the word of God. And what God is doing consistently is sharing to you his word. And his word planting on the inside of you is the very thing that's going to grow. And when it grows, it's going to be something that is beneficial for you and someone else. But the last thing the enemy wants 
is for you to get a hold of that seed. Because if you get a hold of that seed, then that means you fulfill your purpose in the world. And if you fulfill your purpose in the world, then the enemy's purpose is not fulfilled. How many times do we miss out on what God has for us because we have not made room for, to receive what the Lord has for us? And because we have not made room to receive what the Lord has for us, someone else gets what God had for us. Listen to what happens here. The enemy, the birds come and snatch the seed away. I'm wondering, y'all, why did the birds come and snatch the seed away? Why did the birds come and snatch the seed away? And why did the birds have so much access to these seeds? Well, the sower sows the seeds along the pathway. You know what a pathway is, don't you? That's where people walk. It's easy access. It's open space. It's open season. It's kind of like this roadway here. The sower is sowing seeds. But because your life is an open pathway, you have so much access to you. Everything in your life is open season. And, and you have so many things that are attached to you. And because you're in a space, listen to this. Because you're in an open space and you have not made intentional time to get in a secluded space to receive the seed, you cannot receive the seed because you're in an open space. I, I want you to think about the open pathway. Many of our lives are open pathways where we have so much going on, got something going on Monday, some going on Tuesday, some going on Wednesday, some going on Thursday. Every day of your life, you're pulled to and fro, right? If it's not the children, it's the grandchildren. If it's not the job, it's somebody calling on the phone. It's an open pathway. And so every day of your life, there is always something going on. But the moral of the story is God does not want to sow seed in open pathways. God desires to sow seed in places you can receive the seed. But because many of us have allowed life to cause us to be so busy and so convoluted and so pulled in so many different areas, we are never in a place where we can receive what God has for us. An open place. How many of you this week had a chance to just get away from everything and everyone and get into a space where you were all by yourself? Be honest this week. How many of you this week had a real chance to say, nope, I'm turning my phone off. Nope, I'm not answering the phone from you. Nope, I'm not dealing with that. I'm going to take this time this morning to get in a good space because I don't know what God wants to share to me this morning. And if I allow all of the stuff that is going on this week, I'll never receive what he has for me. I, I wonder, because this happened to me just this week. On Monday, I was leaving home didn't spend the time I was supposed to spend running the church. And all of a sudden, God did something to force me to leave open space and get into closed space. Because this is the thing. God knew he wanted to put something on the inside of me to give to someone I was going to talk to that day. But if I had continued to exist in open space and not go into a closed space. The enemy was going to steal the seed that I needed to give to somebody else. I'm, I want you to hear this, y'all. 
The sower sows seed along the pathway. It's not the sower's fault. He's sowing seed. But the person receiving the seed will never receive the seed along the roadside because it's too busy. One, one author said busyness is not of the devil. It is the devil. Because what the devil does is uses your busyness to hinder you from getting in God's business. I say that one more time. The devil allows busyness to disturb you. That's why you will be going throughout the day and something just jumps up out of nowhere, catches you off guard, and God says, I tried to get you alone to prepare you for that, but because you were in open season and open pathway, you couldn't hear my voice. You see, God does not always speak in audible terms. He does not say, hello, Nancy, I'm here. No, no, God don't speak like that. E Elijah found out that God sometimes speaks behind the cave in a still voice. But because you in front of the cave and you are in open space, you cannot hear what God is saying. But God is saying, I have a seed to sow. And the only way you will receive it is if you cultivate your space, move from the path and go to a secluded place. Go into your secret closet, shut the door, and then your father who is in secret will come to you, give you the seed, give you the nourishment so that the seed could grow. And because you were in a place away from open space, you know, sometimes God will do something to close your open space. Sometimes God will do something that makes you so frustrated, so angry, that God says, this is the only way I'm going to get your attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a scenario to cause you to leave open space and go to secluded space. Because God has a seed to sow. And the seed cannot be sowed and grown in open space. But then look at that pathway, y'all. The pathway is a path. It's where you walk alone. Pathway is where you, you know, can run and glide and do whatever you want to do along the pathway. But notice what the sower does. The sower sows seed while you walking along the path. Now, this is intentional. The reason why. They, you cannot receive the seed from God along the pathway is because along the pathway, you already have an agenda on where you're going. Y'all hear that? Pathway, I already know where I'm going. That's why I'm on the path. I told the Lord, I know my plans. I already did the vision board. I already know where I'm going. I'm, a, I'm along the pathway. You, you know, that's why they say that the Lord laughs when we make our own plans. B because the Lord already knows that you have created a path for your life. You headed down a path that the enemy has already included in his way to cause you to fail and fall. And what God has to do now is because you created a path for your life, God has to include your failure in his success plan. I say that one more time. Because you've already created a pathway for your life, he knows you're going to fail because it's included in the enemy's plan for you to fail when you made the plan at the forefront. So now what God has to do is say, this is where I wanted you to go. Now I have to change my plans and create your failure in my success plan. Don't believe me? Ask the children of Israel. God had a plan for them to make it into the promised land in three days. You see, you only read the story that they were in the wilderness for 40, 40 years. For 40 years. 
It was actually a weekend trip. If you look at the geography, you will know that from Egypt to the promised land was a real short trip. But because they got beside themselves and created their own plans, God had to fix their failure in his succession plan. Some of you right now have already put your plans together. I'm going to do this this day. I'm going here tomorrow. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm going to go to the bank, get this money, go here, and uh, I'm going to give this to this person. You already put your plans together. God laughs because really God is laughing and crying, said, I had a greater plan for them. It was going to take shorter for them to get there. They was going to be able to enjoy more. But now because they done created their plans, I got to take their messed up situation and fix it within my plan. But because God is God and God is omniscient and God knows everything, God already knows how it's going to work out. But if you would have just trusted him and followed his path and just allowed him to put his seed in your life, it wouldn't even happen. But you along the pathway. And so God has planted a seed in your life. And because you are already along the path, you done missed the seed. Y'all get that? You're walking along the pathway, singing your songs, and you just passing the seed. But, but you know what God has to do? God says, in order for you to receive the seed, get your tail off your path, get rooted in and rooted in good soil, and let me do the rest if you just get in good soil. See, see, it's really a comparison that the pathway narrative is a not a good place to receive soil. Get off the path, get in the soil. Y'all hear that? Get off the path. Get in where? Say it with me. Get off the path. Get in where? The soil. Because in the soil, God can cultivate you. In the soil, God can grow you. In the soil, God gives enough energy from the sun and the rain to be able to produce something beneficial. But when you're on the pathway, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know where you're going. Get off the pathway. Get in the soil. But then, pathway requires us to evaluate not only our open space, requires us to evaluate our agenda versus God's agenda. But this is what I really love about this last piece, and I'm finished. The reason why Jesus says, you can't sow seed on the pathway, speaks to what he says in verse number 19. He says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand, the evil one comes and snatches it away. The key word, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom, verse number 19, 19 does not understand. Now, the moral of this narrative about the path are people who hear the word and do not what? Understand the word. Verse number 14 says, in them... It's fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be a ever hearer of the word, but not understand the word. You will be seeing, but not perceiving. In verse number 11, Jesus says, uh, the disciples asked in verse number 10, the disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? Verse 11, because the knowledge of the secrets of heaven has been given to you, not them. Now, I wondered why could the disciples understand and the other folk couldn't understand? Y'all ever thought about that? Now, Jesus going around telling all these good secrets about the kingdom of heaven. And the only people that understand is the disciples. What's so special about Peter, James, John, Nathaniel, Bartholomew, y'all name the rest? What's so special about them that they could understand and no one else could understand? It's wrapped up 
in this phrase, spending time. It's wrapped up in this phrase, spending time. The disciples spent time with Jesus. And the reason why they could understand Jesus is because they spent time with Jesus. I, got a, I had an uncle, Uncle Tommy. Uncle Tommy had a speech impediment. And uh, nobody could understand what Uncle Tommy said. Uh, he, we call it tie tongue. My wife called it tongue tie. You know, we call it tongue. He tie tongue. And uh, we could never understand what Uncle Tommy was saying when we were kids. And Uncle Tommy they do you understand what I'm saying? And we say no. And, and Uncle Tommy would just go and talk and talk, and he would be trying to give us lessons and tell us all kind of things about life. You know, my sisters here, you know, we would never understand what Uncle Tommy was saying. One day, my daddy had Uncle Tommy stay with us all summer long. All summer long, we were spending time with Uncle Tommy. We sitting with Uncle Tommy, we eating with Uncle Tommy, we hanging out with Uncle Tommy. And over time, we start understanding what he was saying. He would be talking to us, and we'd be like, yes. And like, man, I responded to him. I understood what he was saying. He would be, he, he would be laughing with us and talking and giving us life lessons. And all summer long, we knew his language. We could understand what he was saying. A few years ago, my wife came home and met Uncle Tommy for the first time. And she walked up to him, and we, me and Uncle Tommy talking back and forth, having a full-fledged conversation. And she pulled me aside. She said, how in the world could you understand anything that man was saying? I said, oh, we done been with Uncle Tommy for a long time. Now, for people who ain't been around Uncle Tommy, you don't understand him. But if you hang out with him for a while and a long time and just hang out with him, you will understand everything he said. Jesus says, they don't understand me. But you know, the problem was multitudes of people were following him, but not hanging out with him. Y'all with me? Thousands of people followed Jesus because of the miracles he did. But only 12 decided to follow him and stick with him. And so when Jesus was talking about secrets of the kingdom, nobody could understand what Jesus was saying because nobody took the time to spend time with him. Jesus said, you don't understand because you don't know me. Can I ask a question today? How many of us would that be an indictment on us? That, that literally Jesus is trying to give you a word for your life. And many of us cannot interpret nor comprehend what the Lord is saying because we have not spent time with him. Now, spending time with him does not mean you just read your word. Spending time with him does not mean I hung out with him last week. You got to hang out with him every day. David said, your word, I meditate on your word day and night. Your word is like a tree planted by the rivers of water and I will not be moved. Your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. Your word. How many of us are truly spending time with him to the point that as soon as he speaks, you'll understand. Now, this is the key. The sower sow seed at any time. The sower could be sowing seed right now, but you didn't hear it because you don't understand his language. The sower you can leave right today and get in your car and be driving down the street and the sower could be trying to talk to you, but you don't hear it. You don't understand his language. God is saying, you got to get off the pathway. Get in the dirt. In the soil. Spend some time with me. Do not allow 
the busyness of life to hinder you from spending time with him. Because you can't afford not to spend time with him. He speaks too much for you not to spend time with him. I don't care how old you are or how young you are. You cannot afford not to spend time with him. Why? Because God's word is not something that is just wrapped up in these words. He's still speaking and you can be laying in your bed or at work in the morning or walking through the grocery store. And God may say, listen, child. I want you to know this, but because you don't know his language, and some of y'all looking at me like, well, what's his language? You got to find out. How does he speak, pastor? You need to find out. Because he may speak differently to you than he does to me. He didn't speak the same way to the prophets all the time. You got to find out your language with him. My wife and I, I in marriage counseling, ooh, it ain't nothing bad. We in marriage counseling and we do this consistently. And, and one of the things that we do is talk about our love languages. And what I got to make sure is, is I am giving to her love language and she is giving to my love language. Do you know God's love language? Do you know how God talks? One of the problems is this, we don't know. And so God is sowing seed. You don't receive the seed because you don't know his language. I make the challenge to all of you. Spend more time with him. Not 10 minutes in the morning. Not five minutes here. Spend more time with him. Daily spend time with Jesus. That means throughout the day. Sometimes, I was telling Heather this, sometimes God will cancel something on your schedule for you to spend time with him. But because you busy oriented, you fill in that time with something else. And God canceled your schedule for you to spend time with him. The other day I had a canceled schedule and I was about to fill it with something else. God said, what did you tell Heather? You better get off of your feet and on your knees and on your face and spend time with me. How many times are we listening to God's voice? God is sowing seed in all of our lives. Are you making room to receive the seed? Are you making room? Are you really making room? Say, self, have I really Come on, say, self, have I really been making room or have I been filling room with unnecessary things? Get off the path. Get in the soil. When you do that, you'll receive the seed that he has for you. Let's pray. Gracious and kind God, we thank you. We thank you for the seed that you have for us. We thank you for the word that you want to share to us. We thank you for how you want to redirect our lives and guide us in the paths of righteousness. Help us, O oh God, to be more keen to you. Help us, O oh God, to be more connected to you. Help us, O oh God, to listen to your voice. Eliminate ourselves from the distractions of life so that we can hear from you. God, this is not about us. It's all about our connection to you. God, we need you. We need you like we need water in the morning. We need you like our bodies need exercise. God, we need you. Help us, oh God, to clear our mind from all distractions, to be in more in tune with you. God, we give you thanks and we give you praise. We give you glory because your name is worthy to be praised. As in your name we pray, everyone said amen. This time, there's somebody that God wants to make room. It's the beginning of this series and God is going to start working with many of us as he did in I Choose to Believe. 
But God wants somebody in this place to start making room. He's saying that you got too much in your life that's causing you not to receive what he has. And so somebody needs to step off your pathway and now get in the soil. I don't know who you are today, but that's for you. And maybe, come on brothers, maybe getting off the pathway and getting into the soil is accepting him. And saying, Lord, I need you to come into my heart. Those of you who are watching us on live stream, maybe that's you. Saying, God, today I need to make the step to change my agenda to your agenda. Today I need to make the step to close my busyness of life and get into my solitude of life. Today I need to make the step to spend more time with you. Maybe you haven't made that decision yet. Today I want you to make that step. Maybe you're in this place and you're saved and you're walking with Jesus. Well, you have the language, but you don't have the lifestyle. Today maybe you want to join this church. Join hand in hand with us as we make every step. As we continue to move from the path to get into the soil. None of us are perfect. None of us have it all together. We may think we have it together, but we don't. This is an a imperfect church serving a perfect God. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. And all we want to do is simply build the kingdom of God through sharing love to every person and helping every generation grow in faith. you to listen to the words make room Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what God has done in this place. There may be someone else today as well that have come for prayer. We haven't done this in a while. We're still trying to figure out COVID connections. But I want to make this altar open for you today. Those of you who need prayer. Those of you who need God to move and help make room in your life. Come on down to the altar. If 
you're in need for God to do something in your life, come on down to the altar. to the altar. We serve a big God who's able to do big things, things that we cannot do on our own. And so we're so grateful that those of you, whether in the pews here, those of you who are watching, know the power of prayer and know that God can do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all, we can ever think or imagine. There is nothing God cannot do. And so those of you who have come to this space, I want you to make a declaration that as you come to this space, whatever you're praying for, you're going to leave it right here. Because there's no need to come here and take it back. There is no need to be worried about something and ask God to do something and then you leave here and you still consume with it. Let it go. Make room for God to do his thing. Give him some room. Give him some room. Say, God, you got room. Tell me, God, you got room to do whatever you need to do. He's able to do it. Amen. Let's pray. God, we come to you right now with all different concerns, all different petitions. All of our issues are not the same, but God, we serve the same God. And we know, God, that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Some of us have come today to offer a family member over in your hands, a family member who's going through sickness or health issues or other crises. We're here to intercede on their behalf. Some of us are here for ourselves. We are going through something, God, that we cannot deal with alone. And so right now, we've come, Lord, for whatever we're going through, to offer it to you. And say, God, I pray that you would just have your way. I pray, God, that you would remind us that we are the clay and you are the potter. Remind us, God, that you are the ones that put our lives together. You are the one that lifts us when we're down. You're the one that gives us joy when we have sadness. You're the one that brings us peace when our lives are so crowded by pain and suffering. So, Lord, we come to you this morning. Coming to you this morning, God, because you're the only one that we can come to. You're the only one that can heal our bodies. You're the only one that can restore our souls. And so right now, we lift our eyes towards you. We lift our hands towards you. And we offer up what we are worried about, what we are consumed about. Lord, we're making room for you to just do what you need to do. And we know, Lord, when you show up, everything is going to be all right. We know, God, that every knee has to bow and every tongue has to confess at your name. And since, God, you have all power, we've come to you right now. We know, God, that you are on a cattle on a thousand hills. We know, God, you are the provider of every need. We know, God, that you can do all things but fail. We know, God, that there is nothing that you cannot do. So, Lord, we trust in you. We believe by faith that all things are going to work out for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. We love you, God. And we know you're able. We know you're able. Now unto you who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ever ask or imagine. Now unto you, God. We look toward you, God. We know all of our strength comes from you. We know all of our help comes from you. We know all of our peace comes from you. We know all of our love comes from you. And so, God, we look unto you, God. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. All of my help comes from you, Lord. We look unto you, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We look unto you, God. And we know you can do. We know you are able. And so, God, we lay down our burdens at 
this altar and we say God have your way and whatever your will is God we will we will follow and we will trust God whatever your will is for our lives God we're going to obey thank you God 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 thank you that you're able and so we count it as done everything that we're asking for everything that we have faith for we count it as done and we know God right now since you are working we know God everything is going to be all right we trust you God it's in your name we pray every child of God said amen Walk away believing God and give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We have some members that we want to welcome. Also found out this morning in Sunday school that three children want to be baptized and gave their lives to Christ. Come on, give, come on, y'all, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen, amen, amen. Pastor Cash, we, the members of East Mount Zion Baptist Church, welcome with loving arms Brother Kevin Cash to become a member of our loving family through Christian experience. Come on, stand up, Kevin. We thank God that he has brought you to us. We pledge to walk with you along your faith journey. We will pray with you, study with you, sing with you, and worship with you. This is our unanimous agreement. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand and clap of praise. And one unites with our church and one unites with our fellowship. We have one thing. Would y'all say that with me? Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen, amen. Was that it, Deke? We have one more person or is that it? Miss Julia, come, would you come... You have it in your text message. Maybe she's not here. Okay, we'll do it next Sunday. Amen. Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Amen. We're just so grateful. And we spend this time because God is adding to our church and adding to this fellowship. And... Um, Y'all ought to be excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. Come on, y'all just give, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for what he is doing. I want to th we're going to prepare now our hearts for communion. I want to thank God for our woman's auxiliary leader, Ms. Pamela Honorwa. Would you give Ms. Pam a hand? Amen. Um, they led our intergenerational social on yesterday, and it was a wonderful event. And her leaders and teams, Ms. Julia, Arnold, and uh, who else was with you all leading that? Miss Christine Walsh. Oh, okay, great. Amen. Y'all pulling everybody in. Amen. God be praised. And so they did such a wonderful job. And our mission here is to build the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God, as we shared last week, looks different. It's, it's intergenerational. It's interracial. It's, it's God's people all over the place and all over the world. God is bringing to this space because God is doing a unique thing on the corner of 100 and Euclid. Do y'all believe that? Amen. I believe it. I believe it. Um, I also want to announce uh, that our Haggai restoration project finished on last Sunday and uh, we still counting. Uh, but at right now we have 
over one hundred and ten thousand dollars. I, I just I think that we just got to learn how to celebrate. Celebrate, Amen. Y'all did that. We did this. Oh. Um, Amen, amen. Um, and uh, we still have almost 140,000 in pledges. So 110 has been turned in, and we still counting because we want to get up to that 140, about 138, I believe, in terms of pledges. And so we are so grateful for what God is doing. We're going to be able to get uh, engaged, our contract to get boilers on over there. And so uh, within a few weeks, Amen. Within a few weeks, there's going to be heat in the sanctuary. It's a sad dog that can't wave his tail. Y'all ought to be able to be able. How many of you, how, how, how many of my lifeline in here? Lifeline, where you at? Lifeline, wave your hand. Y'all know how cold it was in that basement? Yeah. For three years almost, no heat. And God has allowed us to restore our heat. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. All right, let's now prepare ourselves for our communion. Uh, prepare ourselves. Everyone has a communion receptacle. Well, everyone besides me. Do I have a communion? All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, brothers, the uh, containers are on the edge here, and after communion, we'll grab that and take everyone's communion. All right. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come back to the table, to the space of a reminder of what you did for us over 2,000 years ago. God, you died. You were buried and you rose again just for us. You went through it all for us. You made room for us. You invited us to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. And God will never forget the sacrifice that you made over 2,000 years ago. And so now, God, we come back to this space with this juice and this cracker to symbolize the sacrifice you made on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. And so now, Lord, we pray that you would work in us and through us. Forgive us for all of our sins that we've transgressed and transgressed against you. Forgive us for the wrongful thoughts we've had. Forgive us for the evil intents we had. We pray, O oh Lord, if there's any ought that we have with our brother and sister, we pray, Lord, that we've made it right. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to remove any jealousy, any hatred out of our hearts as we've come to this table again, because you told us in your word that many are asleep because they did not take this communion right. And so, Lord, we pray that you would work in and through us. It is in your name we pray. Amen. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he passed a plate. That plate is the symbolization of his body. It was broken for us. It was mangled for us. He did it just for you and I. Would you now eat with me? They passed then a, a cup, and that cup was filled with wine. Without the shedding of blood, that would be no remission of sins. He shed his blood just for you and I. Would you all drink with me? Amen. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. He made when I was lost. He died on the cross. Oh, I know it was the blood for me. Oh, I know it was the blood. Come on, y'all sing that. I know it. Oh, 
Come on, one more time. I know it was the blood. Come on, y'all sing that. I know Y'all know that? I know Amen. Amen. God be praised. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Amen. I also want to uh, shout out this young brother who is the head coach of John Marshall High School football team. Terrence, would you stand? Y'all give Terrence a hand. Um, I want to acknowledge Terrence because he is one of our newest members and he is doing an amazing work at John Marshall High School. Amen. And so um, I, I, I popped up on him uh, on Friday, uh, but, but I want y'all to get his schedule and I want y'all to pop up on him and uh, look at John Marshall's schedule online and I want y'all to go support that brother. He's doing amazing work. Amen. Amen. Now, now wait, y'all. Listen, we, we let everybody else talk about our men. But right now, I want to uplift that brother. He's doing a great work. Amen. Amen. So I want, I want, I want y'all to do some pop-ups at, at that football game because he's doing some wonderful work. Amen. All right, it's now time for us uh, to leave. I'm, I'm asking everyone to prepare your tithes and offering now. Uh, it is giving time. We're going to give on our way out. I want to thank everyone who has done such a wonderful job in tithing and giving. Um, the information is on the screen for those of you who are watching us live. Thank you all so much for your commitment. Those of you who are new and you want to give and you do not have cash, we do have an online, online platform. You can text the letters EMZBC to the number 77977 and you can be able to give. Uh, that way. Again, thank you all so much for your continued gifts. Now let us prepare ourselves for the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face ever shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance and give you peace. May he bless you in your going in and your going out, in your rising and even in your falling. May the Lord be a blessing to you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. Please, let's keep our...